This is an introduction to a video I have already filmed and edited, and I'm doing it because I got feedback on Twitter that context is important when evaluating whether this is protective or not. And that context is, where are you coming from? If you're coming from no protection, let's say you're a healthcare worker who has to take their mask off to eat in a communal break room around colleagues who may be sick, well, in that case, this is upside. It's providing you with filtered air, and even if it's not perfect, it's going to be cleaner than the air otherwise. So, in that context, more protection. But what if you're wearing a mask normally in a situation and you decide, um, you know, I think I'm going to go there where I would not normally take off my mask, but use this instead. Well, if your mask fits you well and it's a good mask, you might be getting 100 times cleaner air inside that mask. Uh, fit as individual, so that's going to vary from person to person and mask to mask. But let's say 100, you're going to go down to 2 to 15 times cleaner air. And that's dependent on you being in the exact right spot. So in that case, you lost some protection. That's called risk compensation. And well, you want to be careful not to do that, or at least not to do that unconsciously. You want to make sure that you're aware of your change in risk. On the other hand, some people's masks don't fit that well, so they might not be losing as much protection. It's all a careful balance. Now, to make it work better, you need to pay attention. This is not the kind of thing that you just sit out in the corner and lean back and think it's protecting you fully. This projects a very thin column of purified air. And to get the best effect, you need to be close to it and you need to point it right at you. So take a look at the video that's gonna follow and you'll understand why that is. I've got some visualizations and test results that show you why you wanna be precise when using this. Now, Engineer Wong posted something. Um, Adam Wong, who sent this to me, pointed out that some people have been pushing uh, little uh, rulers into the slots here on this so they can better visualize their distance from it and the angle that they're pointing uh, it at. Now, I got this at Daiso. This one doesn't fit inside the slots. You might have better luck and find one that does. But I think it's a good idea to have a visual indicator. And I'm hoping that future models will have some sort of way of indicating the direction it's pointing at because that is so critical to the performance. And at some point, I'm hoping to test this with some additional tests to see what we can do to get the absolute best performance at. Um, I, I did some real world testing or what I thought was real world testing and I'm digressing a little bit, but I use it on a desk um, and I can't get it the recommended closest distance of say 30 centimeters from a desk uh, I need more height to do that because 30 centimeters is just like a you know 11.8 inches, um, and that's further than this. So you'll need to find a way to elevate it uh, if you want the best protection. It requires some forethought, so keep that in mind, and we'll talk to you later. All right, as you can see, I've got test equipment set up, and I've got the Air Fanta set up. Uh, although actually, it is the Four Light Personal Laminar Air Purifier. Just want to get that straight. And we're going to test it with these two sample tubes here. And they're going to collect air coming in and coming out of the air purifier. The port account is going to count the particles from each one of these tubes. And it's going to uh, tell us the difference between the two, which it calls the fit factor. So if um, the air is 10 times cleaner coming out, 10 times fewer particles, it's going to call it a fit factor of 10. And it is measuring sub-micron particles. This might perform better with larger particles, so um, don't want to make too many assumptions, but submicron particles are those that are used to test N95 masks um, at NIOSH, certain sizes, lots of nuances, don't want to get too detailed. But the first test is going to be right next to it. But before we do that, we need to turn it on, hold it down, um, hold the power button down for a few seconds to start it. That is to keep the unit from being accidentally turned on. And before we do more testing, let's take a look at the airflow coming out and see just how wide the beam is um, right out of it. So as you can see, right in front, it's pretty narrow. But even if we move out to 30 centimeters, it's still pretty narrow. And it widens up a little bit as we get out to 50 centimeters. Now, just because that beam is narrow doesn't mean that the air inside of it is all completely pure. Uh, the idea of a laminar flow is to get smooth airflow that doesn't drag any outside air into it with turbulent airflow that would mix the unfiltered air with the filtered air. 
Uh, we're going to find out how well this manages to do that, how good the laminar airflow is by testing it with the port account. So the first test is going to be right in front. We want to give it the best chance possible and see how well it does. All right, we're looking at the uh, real-time fit factor, and it's coming up to 8.5, 8.6. So almost nine times uh, more protective if you put your face right next to it. That's still less than the minimum fit factor of 20 that I would expect from a good mask. Um, but that is protective. Now let's see what it does at an actual usable distance. We're going to try uh, 30 centimeters at the low fan setting, which is the setting they recommend at this distance. And let's go ahead and make sure that we got that right where it needs to be. Okay. All right, let's wait for the sample to go down the tube and see what it's coming up to. All right, that's doing all right. Even at a distance, um, we're getting almost the same protection, seven times instead of nearly nine times or eight and a half times. But anyways, we're still getting uh, significant protection, not as much as I'd like from a mask, but still protection. What happens when you come off axis? How good is that beam in terms of keeping um, other air from getting mixed in? We're going to go off axis five centimeters. All right, there's five centimeters. Wait for the sample to get down the tube. So two, that's surgical mask territory um, or possibly worse. That's not very protective. So that's, that's a really narrow range you've got to be in. Um, I don't know how you're going to make sure that you're within that range uh, at that distance without a good visual indicator. We might need to think about whether laminar airflow devices need some sort of um, like a stick or a lens to indicate when you're on axis. All right, next, let's move on to medium speed at the recommended distance. And before we do that, let's see if that changes anything. Not really. All right, so let's go to the... Uh, All right, medium speed at 40 centimeters, the recommended airflow uh, or airspeed for that distance by the manufacturer. We are getting protection five times. Um, all right, that is protection. Let's go off axis Five centimeters, five times goes down to two, 2.4, 2.2. So the protection has gone down by half by being off axis, just five centimeters. So you really have to be tight in that narrow beam there. All right, the next one, um, suggested speed is going to be the high speed. And uh, we'll go... All right. So at 50 centimeters, we're really not getting great protection. Uh, about three. That is better than no protection, is better than nothing. Let's go off axis. Five centimeters. And... Uh, down to two the fall off isn't quite as dramatic but the protection wasn't as good to begin with so we are starting to get air diffused in um so uh it does protect you but not as much as i would hope so the thing to consider is to make sure that you don't ditch a mask that protects you 10 20 100 times for this that's protecting you two to eight times you're going to get a reduced protection, and that's called risk compensation. So if you take on additional risks, get rid of the masks and go eat out in a restaurant because you think this will protect you, that, that's a choice you can make. But you just be aware that you are increasing your risk by doing that because this is not protecting as well as a mask. But for situations where you 
have to uh, take off your mask like a dental visit, well, this is only upside. Even if it's not perfect protection, it's more protection than you've got by not having it. So this does have some potential, but I think the device has room for improvement and it's a good start. Now we, we did a tabletop test, but the ultimate test is probably to see how it works in practice. So to do that, I'm setting it up at an angle in a situation similar to what I feel like I might use it in the real world. Um, I'm about 50 centimeters away. I've got it on the max airspeed setting uh, to try to get the best results. And we're gonna see how they do. So I'm holding this tube in what's called the breathing zone between my nose and mouth to try to get a representative sample. All right, so I'm getting protection of about 2.7. I mean, I feel like I'm in the middle of the air column. I, I can feel it on my face and I can feel how narrow it is because it's not really hitting all of my face at once, just right here. So if I lean out of it just a little bit, um, wait for the sample to go down the tube. Um, actually, I'm still getting more protection than I thought I would by leaning out, but it's still only a factor of two. All right, now how much is it? Uh, now it's almost nothing. And now, wait for the sample to go down the tube. I'm getting a protection of three and a half. So again, definitely better than nothing, not as good as a mask. So if you do use a personal laminar airflow purifier, keep in mind its limitations and try not to put yourself in situations that would be riskier than you normally would take on. This is going to be the extras portion of the video. We're going to do some other visualizations and measure larger particles with this optical particle counter. I want to see if maybe it does better with bigger particles and gives more protection for them. Um, so to do that, we're going to do the exact same protocol, close up, then we're going to do um, 30, 40, and 50 at low, medium, and high speeds. Well, that wraps it up for the optical particle counter portion of the video. And uh, well, when we look at it, the results are pretty similar to the port account. Uh, when we start off on the far left, that is the stacked uh, particles, uh, all the different sizes all stacked on top of each other. Um, so when we go from there with no fan to the fan on, the second one over there, huge drop off. So now I don't know if there's some user error on my part um, with having this so close to the fan or not, but either way, it's plausible. What's of more interest to us is going to be 30 centimeters with the low fan as per the instruction manual. And we can see that does give you some, uh, some protection if you're on axis, 30 centimeters away, low fan. But as soon as you go five centimeters off, suddenly you're only getting um, half the filtration of the um, room air. It's, it's, about, <laughs> it's not that effective. And remember, five centimeters is from here to here. That is barely any at all. That's huge going from, you know, decent production to surgical mask or, or worse. So now medium fan out to 40. Once again, we're getting, you know, some, mm. some protection, but you go five centimeters off, um, the particle count goes way, way up. And again, here we go uh, to 50 centimeters high fan, not as much protection. And when we go offset, the particles go up. Now, they don't go up as much because we're, we're starting to lose the protection the farther out we get. So the mixed air is getting in and there's not as much different off axis, not because we're getting a nice wide clean field, but because the air is starting to get turbulent and mixed once we start moving out away from 30 centimeters. So again, you do get some protection. Just be careful not to use this um, in a circumstance you wouldn't have gone into and don't have to go into risk compensation uh, can make you less safe. But this can make you more safe if you use it doing something you were going to do anyways. While we've seen the test results, the numbers show that we're not getting as much protection out of the Air Fanta for light as we might wish, but it's hard to understand exactly why that is just by looking at it because the airflow is invisible. So I want to take a look at some ways to try to make the airflow a little bit more visible. We already used my little uh, stick of plastic strips that gave kind of an idea of the bean. 
Now let's try some fog and see if we can't provide some insight. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a fan that does not have a laminar flow and see if we can see anything about that. Now, as I think you can see from this visualization, um, this uh, fog is getting sucked right into the um, uh, the airflow and just dragged along with it. Uh, and for some reason, a little more on this side than the other. But that's kind of the issue that um, we're trying to avoid with the Air Fanta. This is causing turbulent flow. Now let's see what happens with the Air Fanta. Now, looking overhead, you can see that stream of clear air going down the center. And that's where you want your face to be. Um, the outside air is represented by the fog, and you want that unfiltered air away from you. Here's a laser view, and as you can see, it's the same fog machines. There's still that clear zone in the center, and you can see the turbulence a little bit better with the laser. Uh, even at the end where there's mixed air, it's still cleaner than the um, outside air because you've got purified air mixed in with it. Now, at the very end, I'm going to show you what two of the machines look like together, and uh, we might have a chance to test that in a later video. So there it is. We'll see if we can't do a better job with that later. Please be safe. Well, that's it for this video. Um, I hope you'll give some consideration to how to use this properly and when to use it so that you can be safe. Make sure that you're using it to gain an upside and not risk compensating. Now, I may do some other videos with this. I'd like to see, you know, how you can precisely align yourself better and more easily and some other aspects of it. So it's an interesting product and I hope to learn more about it.